This is the new Terex Agravic Flow 2, Adidas's new trail running shoe and in this video I'm going to give you my thoughts on it and whether it runs as vibrantly as its colorway. In the Adidas trail running lineup, the Gravic Flow 2 is your commercial offering designed to keep a wide range of runners happy. It's not quite as flashy as some other shoes in their lineup, but it does give you a well-cushioned technical shoe that can go the distance. It's priced at a more realistic $140, which gives you a really good value for money offering. One of the first things you do when you pick up a trail shoe is flip it over and examine its outsole. Right here we've got a continental rubber outsole which has been a winning recipe for the brand over these years. And the lug pattern they've used is 4mm in depth which is pretty standard for a trail shoe designed for predominantly dry terrain. The lug pattern is multi-directional so that you've got good grip while running on different gradients both uphill and downhill and also on different types of trail. Grip is a real strong point about the shoe and I'm also confident in this outsole's durability. The nice thing about this outsole in conjunction with the midsole is that it will do just fine on light road as you in inevitably go from your door to the trail and cover a bit of road. Is there a rock plate in the shoe? Yes there is. You can see it here in yellow and it stretches all the way from the midfoot over to your toes and it gives your foot that extra bit of protection as you run over gnarly surfaces. Like most trail shoes, the combination of a rubberous outsole, a rock plate and a slightly firmer midsole makes it slightly stiffer than a road shoe, but this is no different than the shoe's competitors. At the midsole there's no boost cushioning but there is Light Strike which is the brand's firmer alternative. I haven't loved Light Strike in all of Addy's shoes but it works well here as it's responsive and resilient. The cushioning of the shoe works off of a 28 to 20 mm stack height that's protective and cushioned, but not maximal like a Hoka Speedgoat. The step and feel of the shoe is more traditional, it's slightly on the firmer side but in a good way and the shoe comes to life more on the trails than when you're trying it on in store or on the road. There's a secret feature about the shoe's midsole that Adidas don't necessarily call out and that is that they use a dual density foam in the shoe and that they use this pro moderator foam in the midsection of both the medial and lateral side and that gives the shoe an inherent stability so that there's more resistance against collapsing on either side of the shoe and this gives the shoe as I said a stability feature without making it a stability shoe that isn't suitable for a neutral runner. Adidas call out the weight of their shoes on the upper this being 320 grams or 11.2 ounces in a men's size. What I can say is that you're not going to be winning many trail races in the shoe but it does appear more bulky and heavier in hand than it does on foot but we'll get back to this in a sec. The upper units on the shoe combine breathability, moisture management and durability and they've also added overlays to prevent scuffing and give your foot a protective feel for when you do inevitably bump a rock. In terms of this lacing unit, these eye stays which are the units that the eyelets lie on are a bit rigid and have caused issues on previous Addy shoes but I haven't felt it here. But perhaps they could be a bit softer to minimize the risk of issues going forward. The tongue on the shoe is fairly thin which has also been a hit or miss on previous Addy shoes but I enjoy it on the shoe and there's no issue whatsoever. The heel count is nice and sturdy and really anchors your foot inside the shoe for that supportive lockdown. So we've spoken a bit about the shoe's technical specs, now let's chat about who the shoe is most suitable for. The first thing to know is that this shoe plays itself into the hands of a runner looking for a traditional off-roader that is distance ready and bulletproof. Its constructed design offers a supportive fit that is suitable for a runner who's wary of putting a step wrong, while its technical design is suitable for rugged terrain but not necessarily wet and muddy terrain. The shoe is also suitable for a heavier runner thanks to its resilient build and with an 8mm heel to toe drop it is suitable for both a forefoot and heel runner but does suit the latter a bit more because it is more of an easier slower shoe which plays into the hands of that slower heel striker. In terms of distance and use this is an everyday or easy day running shoe for me and its sweet spot is probably between 10 and 30k distance. Anything further and I'd probably want something just a tad softer. If you're a racing snake or a runner looking for a streamlined agile shoe I don't think this is your one. But for a runner looking for a traditional technical off-roader that can do a bit of everything this is a lovely shoe. Thanks very much for watching this shoe review. I've got a couple of exciting videos up very shortly so stay tuned for that and we'll chat then. Cheers.